Acorn is often blamed for playing a major role in the mortgage meltdown that put us in the financial crisis that we're in. Tonight we ask, is the crisis exactly what Acorn wants us to be in? Many believe Acorn was actually created not to help Americans with low incomes to get them out to vote, but to get people on welfare. Wade Rathke, he's a guy you're familiar with, he's the group's founder, but the people who came up with this ideology that Acorn adopted were two radical Columbia University sociologists, Richard Cloward and Francis Fox Piven. The pair were a married couple who published an article in a 1966 issue of The Nation titled, The Weight of the Poor, a Strategy to End Poverty, which essentially was a crisis strategy. According to David Horowitz, a former member of the New Left in the 1960s, Cloward and Piven sought to hasten the fall of capitalism by overloading the government with a flood of impossible demands, thus pushing society into crisis and economic collapse, forcing a complete overhaul of the way our government redistributes income, also known as forcing as many people on welfare as possible. Poor people can only advance when, quote, the rest of society is afraid of them, end quote. Capital Research Center's Matthew Vadim says the roots of ACORN grew out of the radical welfare rights movement. The idea behind that was that not enough people were on welfare and that you needed to pack the welfare rolls with as many people as possible in order to overwhelm the governments, the various levels of government, and cause social chaos. Cloward and Piven were invited guests of President Bill Bill Clinton, 1996, when he signed the Personal Responsibility and Work Opportunity Reconciliation Act, which imposed time limits on federal welfare, along with strict eligibility and work requirements. But years before that, they sought to use a host of aggressive organizers to force redistribution of the nation's wealth. The professors recruited a militant black organizer named George Wiley to lead their new movement. Wiley created the National Welfare Reform Organization, or NWRO, in the 1960s. His followers invaded welfare offices across the United States, often violently, bullying social workers and loudly demanding that every penny to which the law entitled them be spent. One of the followers was a young, well-to-do dropout from Williams College. Surprise, surprise, Wade Radke. Radke at the time was organizing draft resistance for the militant group Students for a Democratic Society. A short while later, in 1970, Radke founded ACORN, but his organization would have a wider mission than that of the National Welfare Reform Organization. Instead of focusing solely on welfare recipients, ACORN would work on issues, touching all low-income and working-class people. ACORN was formed in Little Rock, Arkansas, as the Arkansas Community Organizations for Reform Now. When it grew nationwide, the name was changed to the Association of Community Organizations for Reform Now. Decades later, the group, as we know today, is accused of being one of the most corrupt organizations in America. Not only is it accused of voter registration fraud, but current and former board members believe their community organizer has broken all kinds of federal laws that involve the illegal transfer of monies earmarked to different ACORN affiliates, activities that may amount to organized crime. And who could forget that Wade Radke and his brother Dale, who was once the CFO of ACORN, were fired in 2008. Dale's embezzlement of nearly one million dollars. A crime never investigated by authorities. Former members as far back as 20 years ago have made similar accusations. One time Acorn State Chairman Dorothy Perkins told the Arkansas Democrat Gazette that her organization was quote one of the biggest scams in Arkansas end quote and adds Wade Rathke ran it like a Jim Jones cult quote unquote no one thought for themselves. Oh, and one more thing. A portion of Acorn's People's Platform Manifesto, drafted in 1970, reads, and I quote, We come before our nation not to petition with hat in hand, but to rise as one people and demand. We will no longer wait for the crumbs at America's door. We will continue our fight until the American way is just one way, until we have shared the wealth. The question tonight is... 
How much has the radical left influenced President Barack Obama and our government? Barack Obama has spent a large portion of his career working for ACORN and its subsidiaries. And now, in his first term, he begins to share the wealth.